crew, welcome back to another Spray Castle tutorial. So in today's tutorial, I actually introduced these a little bit earlier. And I was introducing them for those of you who are a little bit curious about the spray paint brushes I've been working on. So basically the spray paint brushes look like a spray paint brush, but they have a rubber tip. Now they come in different sizes. Uh, you can get them smaller for finer details. You don't have to worry about your brushes, your actual brushes getting stuck together and just clumping up. Uh, you know, you can use the rubber tips spray paint brushes. They will be available on the website here pretty soon. But let's make a tutorial. Let's kind of show what some of their abilities can be when used for the artist spray paint. Um, I don't really have anything in mind to paint, so I'm just going to paint and let the paint flow. And let's see what we come up with. Uh, let me see, can you guys see this right here? Okay, good. I'm going to put this right about here. Sometimes I feel like I need a larger table, you know, but then when I have a larger table, I can't ever find anything. It, eh, it's never winning. <laughs> can never win. We're going to start off with our black. We're going to be using our Spray Castle Black. This is the same black that comes in your kit, so if you guys ordered a kit before, this is the same color. Now, I've had a couple of people ask me if I use the same colors as I use in my kits. Absolutely. I mean, I get the paints made and I keep some and I sell the rest. So, yep, same ones. All right. I think, uh, you know what? I always say let's start with the sky layer and work our way forward. So, I'm just going to use our light blue. Now, guys, this is a light layer. You know, there, there's a difference. Dark layer, light layer. So, I'm usually about a foot, maybe a foot and a half away from my painting. This is going to be my, my sky. You know, here is the critical point. This is where you can actually create a division between water, if you're going to add some water, or just, uh, uh, you know, just a regular sky, and then we can cover the bottom later on. But, in this case... I'm just going to make it all sky. I don't think I'm going to make this a water painting. I suppose we could, but uh, we'll see. We're going to start off by creating some terrain here in the background. So I'm just going to come through. Tap, 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 tap. I'm just going to come down here. So this is the infamous spray castle tool. This is the one. There are similar tools out there, but this is the one we get specifically made for us. I'm kind of picky when it comes to the rubber that we use. I want it to be durable. There's a rubber that is almost, almost like a, like an eraser rubber. So it doesn't last very long. So I'm kind of a picky guy. I make my manufacturers try different rubbers. In this case, this same type of rubber is the same type that I've used in my, uh, my brushes, my spray paint brushes. You guys are probably wondering what this is. Uh, yep, so am I. No, I'm going to make this into like maybe just a background. This is not even going to be the focus of the painting. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create one there. Maybe we can add a little bit more black. I'm going to create one here in the distance. Yeah, let's do that. I'm going to create something way back here. Way in the distance. And I'm going to create maybe another little cliff here. Okay. Now to save on me using the tool over and over, I'm just going to use some black. Alright. Alright. So I'm not going to use the brushes yet. I'll use the brushes when it's a little more detail required. I'm going to use some of our sky blue, same sky uh, color that we use for our sky in the background. Now, okay, here's the thing. The tool, you can see the black underneath, right? Let me show you how easy these tools are to clean because they are rubber. Now, whenever I had to use regular bristles on my, my paintings, 
they weren't this easy to clean. I had to use acetone, kind of let them sink, uh, sit in there for a little while. Check this out. I'm going to make this rock here. I'm going to fade it by using our blue. Just kind of fade it. Light layers. Now, I'm going to come here with a regular light blue again. But I'm going to make this terrain right here a little more defined. Notice how easy it is to create textures on rocks. Yeah, a little more there. And perhaps we can add some layers right here. You don't have to concentrate a lot on the detail. The detail will come later. Right, I'm going to use a little bit of our black, just to kind of fade these layers right here. Fade them just a little bit, so they're not so bright, so dark right there in front of us. Alright then, I'm going to do the same thing that we did on this layer, on this side, over here. We're just creating some rocks some terrain, some texture, look at that. And we're going to do the same that we did on the other side. We're going to fade it. So it's not so bulgy and sticking out, you know. Alright, so here's where I'm going to add another piece of terrain. I think you guys are going to like this. A little bit of black. Handy dandy tool yet again. I'm going to create maybe a piece right here. Alright, sorry if my head is in the way guys, but <laughs> got a big head. Alright, we're just going to add another piece of terrain here. I know you guys are probably wondering, like, what the heck, Spray? Well, I don't know yet, but let's figure it out. I'm just doing something that's that you won't commonly see out there. There's a lot of uh, stencils. There's a lot of uh, cool little techniques people are experimenting with. And with it, sometimes you'll see a lot of the same paintings over and over and over and over. And I think that's great. I mean, hey, I'm all down for practicing and getting everything anything uh, put down on paper so that you guys can start learning new techniques and whatnot and sometimes that require us for for all of us to be doing the same painting and I've done this several times you know over and over just to kind of get the hang of what I'm trying to paint here so now then again I'm gonna use my tool here I'm showing you guys how easy it is to create something I could do this all all day long if I'm spray painting live now I know I talk a lot during these tutorials, I'll be the first one to admit it. I know I do. Uh, but that's because I want you guys to get the full experience of what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Okay, so now at this point, the tool is too big for me to be adding highlights with it. So I'm going to clean it, and I'm going to use one of our brushes. This is a pretty good size right here. Alright, so it's kind of small. But I'll be able to do the same things I was doing with those bigger rocks right here on our closer terrain. So, here we go. I'm going to start off with the edges. I'm going to start coming in here and adding some detail. I'm a true believer, the right tool for the right job. I'm telling you guys, I spent a lot of time designing these tools. Now there is similar tools out there. The rubber is different, much different. 
Like I said, I'm very picky when it comes to the kind of materials I work with. And because of that, I've had, I've had to wait sometimes, sometimes even years when I'm creating or developing tools or spray paints. Easy, easy stuff. Look at this. Bam. All right. So yeah, this is just a nice little piece of rock. All right. You can see all the texture. You can see the light surrounding it. Just going to add a little bit of black here in the middle. Nice. All right, now let's add some detail to it. What do you mean by detail? Well, I might have to sit down for this one, but you can add, uh, maybe not, let me see if I can come in here closer. Maybe we can add like a little castle or a little house of some sort. It's one of the main complaints I've had over the years. People want to be able to paint as if they were painting with acrylics or oils and well, it's not quite the same. Uh, this dries faster than anything you've worked with before. The texture is more... It's in a more liquid state than most other medias. Uh, well, besides maybe India ink or watercolors, you know. But... We're getting to the point where we can create more detail on our paintings and using the right tools is step number one. Alright, now look at that. I'm just using it as if I was painting with just a regular brush. Come over here. I'm just gonna add something right here. Just I'm gonna add a little tower right there. Then here on top, I'm gonna add a little peak. Here. I'm going to start creating these nice little castle looking peaks. See that? You can really starting to take shape, huh? Alright. And as you can tell, I mean, it's taking about the same time it would take if you were to be spray painting live. So I'm going to add a little bit of blue here. We're just sticking with two basic colors. Now I've noticed a lot of people will go out there and use a million colors and just give you a seizure on a piece of poster board, but there's not really a whole lot of contrast with it. So with this one, I'm kind of hoping to be able to show you that you can just use two colors. Still get the same dimension of detail. We have depth in this one. I'm just going to use a little bit of light blue here. I'm going to tap maybe right here. Tap, tap, tap. I'm going to do the same right here. I'm going to start adding some of the highlights, wherever I want my highlights to show up. Notice here I'm just tapping, tap, 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 I'm going to make a little roof right here. Now, if you want to get deeper into detail, you can use the brush that has the finer tip on it. Now, like I said, we're going to be able to have these on our website pretty soon. definitely don't need them but I tell you what make a difference on your paintings 
be able to create some finer details. And make a little door right here. Now you don't have to get into very, uh, you know, a whole lot of detail. And I, at first I was, but you know what? I'm just going to leave it as it is. I mean, otherwise we'll be here quite a bit. I'm just going to add a little bit here. Perhaps some detail right here. Right. Now, if you really want to add some, some awesome highlights, we can add a little bit of white. Let me clean my tools here. Funk, right here. Nice and clean. I'm going to add a little bit of white. And I'm thinking I'm going to, yeah, I'm thinking I'm going to have a, our light source right about here. So we're going to come in here, just add a little bit of white. And then we want to blend it in. So you put your white and then you blend it with the rest of the colors. Look at this. Just gonna add maybe a little bit up here. So hopefully the, the age of scratching is over with. Uh, I've seen a lot of spray painters out there, really good spray painters, but they, they sure do like to scratch. And I'm telling you, scratching is kind of cool, but if you want to take your skills to a different level, uh, experiment with highlights, guys. Start adding some highlights. You'll see that it makes a big difference. Look, we'll just tap some right here. Now I'm going to go around the edges because I want to make the effect that we have a lot of light, you know, hitting this area right here. I'm going to use this one now. Kind of blend the little light blue that we have going on there. And just kind of tap some of these rocks right here. Just to create a little rougher texture some highlights on it. I'm going to add right here. And this is kind of important because remember we have our highlight right here. This is where our highlight is going to be. So I want to make sure that I kind of tackle some of the lights, some of the highlights that we're going to be placing here. Just be able to make this a little more realistic. How's everybody doing? I know it's been a, it's been a while since I've done a live tutorial. Um, live tutorials are a lot of fun. I, I really do enjoy them. I just sometimes I kind of get distracted a little bit. And I start talking and talking and, <laughs> and talking and so you know before too long the tutorials kind of last a little longer and yeah I, I know a lot of people like me. I mean I'm definitely one of them. I have this attention span of a squirrel, you know. So it takes that's longer than five minutes, man. So I know everybody has a, a busy lifestyle, so. Just gonna add a little bit of black here. Now, we also have to add some highlights here on this other end. Now, check this out. With the white, just the white, I'm going to go around the edges. Like that. And only on certain areas. 
I'm going to add some right here as well. I know you guys are thinking, like, what are you doing, spray? Well, you'll see. I'm blending the white with our background layer. So it's not quite so such a straight edge or such a defined um, rock. It actually blends into the background. The reason is that it will give us uh, the effect that light is bouncing off of it. Just add a little bit of rocky terrain right here. Now then, I'm going to use my handy dandy light blue. I'm going to come in here, add some clouds. Gonna make this dissipate a little bit. You guys remember how to create a moon? Well, of course, there's different ways, but the way I like to do it is I put my painting. I do I do my can real close to my painting, quick burst, and you got yourself a nice little round moon. So let's do that. Bam! Look at that. Now we're just going to use our star technique and very gently let the paint sputter. I say that and then it doesn't sputter. Come on! My own paint's making me look bad. Nah. Perfect. Uh, I want it to be a little, a little more visible. Awesome. Now here on the bottom, I said I wasn't going to do water. Well, I lied. We'll just do a little bit of clear coat. I was in the middle of doing a tutorial earlier. And uh, I thought, you know what? And make sure that's clear coat. Because last time, a little bit of clear coat here on the bottom. And I'm just going to get a nice thick coat going on. That there, handy dandy spray castle tool. I'm just going to make sure that those layers down here start to mix together. Look at that. Yeah. I'm using the broad end of my brush. And that will just make some of the colors together. Oops, Daisy. All right, now if you want to, and I want to, it's gonna create some more rocks here on the bottom, just to give this more depth. Check this out. Oh, let me make sure you guys can still see me here. I moved the painting a couple of times. Up, oh, all right. Tap, tap, tap. Here we go. Nice little silhouette layer. Some more black. All right, let's do uh, one of my signature uh, moves here. I'm going to create a nice little silhouetted terrain right about here. Feel free to do the sound effects as well. I, I'm all <laughs> I like to make sound effects when I'm painting. Nice little spread edge. Red edges, different sizes, guys, will save your life. Bam. Okay. Now I'm going to add a little bit of white. Right where we had our white previously. Tap into it with our, oh, contaminated spray castle tool. So let's clean it real quick. 
See, that's what I love about these rubber tip brushes. They're so easy to clean. Come in here, tap, 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 tap. Just a little bit of white. Just add a little bit of white back here. Now, I like it, but it's too white. So I'm just going to add, just going to tone it down a little bit. What do you guys think? Yay? Nay? Do you guys like it? Do you guys want to know more or find out more about the spray paint brushes? I'm hoping to have them available on the site uh, probably within ow, a week or two. Uh, first, I have to make sure that I have enough in supply so that I can provide everyone with, uh, you know, with the materials that I promised. So, uh, we're going to have several different sizes. Like I said, sorry guys, it took a while for us to come up with them, but the rubber was very much like an eraser, and I didn't like it, so we had to, we had to go back and forth several times. This rubber is not like an eraser, it's actually a little bit, uh, it's flexible, but you won't sit there and erase and waste away. It'll actually last a little bit longer than some of the tools that are similar to this out, uh, out there. But, there you go. What do you guys think? Do you guys like it? Uh, can you guys hear me, actually? I have this new microphone. And I was hoping that you guys could actually, you know, get to hear me a little bit better. How's everybody doing tonight? Let me see who's here with us. Kent Smith. Hey, Mario. How are you, bud? Uh, Gene Mark. Justin Childers, cool man, we have the whole group right here, Brandon Lee, Greg and uh, Balkan, Randy, Tucknon, Rafi, Adrian, hey Adrian, Celaya, what's up bud, haven't, haven't seen you in a long time, Enrique Ramos, wow, we actually have a pretty big crew, alright, well, thank you guys for joining me in this tutorial, let me see who's on, Billy O, how you doing Billy? Uh, thanks, man. I'm glad you like it. Uh, you can still add some more details to it if you choose. Uh, maybe a little bit of black. Sea sponge, guys. This is what I use. I get a lot of, I get a lot of emails, a lot of wonderful emails. But most of you guys are using these foam brushes. These foam brushes they work really good. But uh, you know, to make plant life, some trees, stick with the uh, sea sponge. I'm telling you. You won't regret it. It's actually very neat to create plant life with it. It makes them so very realistic too. That's what I love about it. So what I like to do is I bring the plants here into the ground, into the water. All right. Well, I'm going to call it on this one. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, don't forget that whenever you make this, the most important thing about your spray painting is your signature. So... I'm going to have a nice thick layer of clear coat to make my painting nice and glossy. I'm going to use my original Spray Castle tool. This is the one that was made out of metal. Spray Castle 2017. Alright guys, I'll bring this up so you guys can see the detail on our castle there. Some of the detail on our on our terrain. Look at that. Alright. Okay, well thank you guys for joining us today. Until next time. Keep those hands shaking.